Savage Finance, because it's a jungle out there that wants your money. Here I will teach you how to manage the jungle and make it out. Welcome to another edition of Savage Finance. This is your host, Glendon Cameron, serial entrepreneur and digital entrepreneur, a digital hustler. I make my money online. And over the course of my many, many years of starting business and having business, I've learned a thing or two about money, and I'm here to share it with you to educate you on savage finance. You know, one of the saddest things that is happening in this country, there was a survey done not too long ago, that if you had to come up as an American with $2,000 cash, the average American could not do it in 30 days. Most people in this country have no savings account. Most people in this country don't have any personal savings and it gets really scary when you start talking about retirement savings. So what we're going to do is address that problem today. If you're new to Savage Finance, what I want you to do is go to the front of the channel. Well, first I want you to subscribe. Second, I want you to comment. Third, I want you to share the video, and each video on this channel builds upon each video. So even if you're coming here three years later, you can still go watch the original videos and get benefit, clarity, and the financial education. We're gonna talk about creative ways to fund an emergency fund. But before we get into that, we're gonna talk about why do you need an emergency fund? Let me tell you what happens to the average person who doesn't have an emergency fund. First of all, life happens. Cars break down. You may need to go see the dentist. There's a lot of little emergencies that happen in life. The washer and dryer breaks down. And typically, most of these emergencies can be covered between $500 and $2,000. But most people have no savings. So when this emergency comes, let's say, you, you wake up, you get ready to go to work, you put the key in your car, your car doesn't come on. Then you have your car towed to the mechanic and you find out you need $1,500 worth of work. You don't have $1,500 cash. So what you gotta do is either put it on a credit card, if you have the credit to do that, or borrow the money, or go without having a car. So this, this car breakdown has become a life-altering emergency. If you had a emergency fund with the money in it, it would just be an inconvenience. This is typically why people live paycheck to paycheck and pray nothing bad happens. And this creates this situation of people living a scarcity mindset, one emergency after other. And this is one of the bad things that happens when you live without a financial safety net. One emergency can prompt other emergencies car breaks down, you don't have the money to get it fixed, you can't get to work, you don't go to work, you lose your job. Now you're really in a world of hurt because you don't have any money, you don't have a job, next, next thing you know, you're evicted. Your car breaks down, you can't go to work, you get evicted, now you gotta move in with friends or be homeless. This is what happens to the economic underclass. And one of the reasons that so many people are poor is behavior not birthright. Did you know, typically the social economic class that you're born in, is the same social economic class you will die. So chances are, if you're born poor, you're gonna die poor because of the behavior in those social economic classes, such as not having a savings account. And this is a generational thing. My mama didn't have a savings account. My daddy didn't have a savings account. My grandparents didn't have a savings account. So this is the economic legacy that is passed down to generation after generation. I want you to think, when's the last time someone in your family said, hey, John, let's sit down and talk about money. This is how you handle credit. This is how you save money. This is how you invest money. This is how you put, when did someone in your family sit you down and have that conversation with you? When my daughter became of age, I put her on one of my credit cards and say, this is how you build your credit. This is how you manage money. And, it, you know, and I schooled her on how to manage money, how to get credit, how to establish credit. And if you're a parent out there and you have a kid, all you have to do is put your child on your credit card account. You don't even have to give them the credit card. They don't even have to use it. 
and this will instantly give them a credit score within 30 to 60 days. Just throwing that out there. So let's talk about creative ways for you to establish this emergency fund. First thing, here's the first step. You're gonna to go to the bank or credit union. You're gonna open up a brand new checking account or savings account. You're going to pick from one of these side hustles and all of the money from this side hustle is going to go into that account. And you're gonna sit down and you're gonna write a goal that I'm going to open up this checking account I'm going to save $5,000, yes, $5,000, put this money in this account through one of these side hustles. And this is why you got to go above and beyond what you're currently doing. Because typically, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, it's going to be real hard for you to establish a savings account because you've got some bad money habits, which we'll address in future videos. Once again, watch all of the videos on this channel, share with friends who need this economic advice. So. We go to the bank, credit union, we put together the goal of $5,000, we pick one of these side hustles. One of the things that you can do to earn almost passive income is to Airbnb one of your rooms. If you live alone, you've got a spare bedroom, you can put that spare bedroom on Airbnb. All of the money that comes in through Airbnb goes into this new checking account. It does not go into your lifestyle spend. This is gonna be something that you're gonna to have to fight against, and this is gonna to have to be something you're gonna to have to deploy massive discipline, because it'll be so easy. It's like, oh, here's this new money. Let me figure out a way to spend it. You cannot do that. Another way that you can, a creative way that you can earn money to fund your emergency fund is to sell on Facebook Marketplace, Amazon, eBay, Poshmark, one of the things you could do is literally go around your house and find everything that you don't want and don't need. And this is the process with this. Take your spare bedroom and go around the house and every piece of clothing, every item, every electronic, every spare cell phone that you no longer need that's just sitting in the drawer somewhere, put it in a room, do all of this, collect everything in your house first. Then you start putting it on eBay or Craigslist or whatever. And every dollar that comes in through that, you go ahead and put that money in the special account until you get to $5,000. This, this is the pathway to changing your economic freedom. This is the pathway to setting yourself apart from the average person. Because once you do this, next time an emergency happens, it becomes an inconvenience versus a life altering event. Let's say you've listened to this channel, you've gone ahead, it's six months in the future, you've got the $5,000 in this savings or checking account, and you go out into your garage and you put the key in the car and it doesn't start. Then you have the car towed to the emergency, to the mechanic, and it's like, well, it's 1,500 bucks. So now you have the 1,500 bucks to get your car fixed, plus the additional money to rent a car while your car is being fixed, so you can get to work and you don't lose your job. It sounds simple, but it's so massively important, my friends, for you to have a savings account. I'm gonna share something with you that's gonna be a little dark. Last year, I had a heart attack. I thought I was good to go. I worked out twice a day. I felt I was eating right, but it caught up with me because I had unregulated high blood pressure. And I spent many weeks in the hospital and I could not work for months. I could not work for months, but the same information that I'm telling you since I'm an entrepreneur, I don't have any sick leave, I don't have any PTO, I don't have any vacation time, so I have to fund my own periods of time off. So I had a ridiculously robust savings account and I went in the hospital and I sat around the house for months, didn't do anything in the beginning. Well, lessons I'm gonna teach you guys in the future, I don't have any quote bills. I really don't have normal bills. I don't have car payments. I don't have credit card payments. And the only thing I have is a mortgage. And while I was out, I had enough money in the bank to pay my mortgage for many, many months. And the way my business is set up, I had money coming in while I was laying on my back, flat on my back, couldn't work, couldn't remember stuff. I actually, my memory, I actually had a, a stroke as well, a heart attack and a stroke that I couldn't even remember how to get in my bank accounts. So I had to literally call the bank and figure out, talk to someone to get access back to my bank account. So one of the things 
that I've learned from this because I practice what I preach. I'm not going to tell you something that I don't do or that I don't know that works. And having the massive savings account, you know, let's say my um, situation went longer, I still would have been good because once again, you got to have a savings account. On my first channel, Hustlers Kung Fu, years ago, I put it out and I remember getting this rewarding email from someone that's like, hey man, you know, I want to thank you for everything that you do. You know, my tooth hurt and I was sitting there stressed out and I was like, oh man, I got, you know, I went to the bank, I had like $1,500 in my savings account. I went to the dentist and got it handled and now I'm good, thank you. So this is to create awareness of the importance of having a savings account. This, because once again, you don't want to be the average American financially. You don't want to be living paycheck to paycheck. While time is good, this is when you need to be putting your acorns away. Because fortunately for most of us, most of us wake up each day. Most of us, life go, is predictable. You go to work, you come home, you eat, you go to sleep. And during these periods of goodness, is when you need to start stacking money. This is the period that you need to start putting money away and segmenting money because, you know, once again, this channel is built where each video you watch will help you because we're going to address foundational stuff. Before we get into investing and all these other things, these are the things that you need to do because if you just start investing and you're living paycheck to paycheck, this is what's going to happen. Let's say you start buying stock and Emergency happened and you got $3,000 worth of stock. You're going to have to sell that stock to satisfy that emergency because you don't have an emergency fund. So check this out. Let's say you found this channel and it's two years in the future and you, you've gotten yourself straight. You got your emergency run fund set up and you're buying stock and an emergency happens. Oh, you go take the money out the emergency fund to satisfy the emergency and you keep buying stock so your investments are undisturbed. It's a totally different game. It's a totally different mindset. Uh, one of the things that you need to do is get in the habit, because habit trumps willpower, of putting money aside. And we're going to talk about that in future videos. Because once you start segmenting your money, because you should run your personal finance section like I run my business. I have an expense account. I have a savings account. I have a merchant account. I have a savings account. I have multiple accounts. I have several checking accounts across my businesses because each account represents a specific purpose for the money. And this is why you need to as have an operating account, have an expense account, have a savings account. And the bulk of your income is going to go into your operating account and start off gently. 90% of your money goes into your operating account. And then 2% of goes into a savings account, then 2% goes into an expense account. And you know, you, you have these, you know, proportionally, you start saving slow because if you're going to do this from your income, you must build the habit of putting money aside, make it a habit. Now here's the cool thing that's going to happen. Once you listen to me and you start stacking this money, you're going to go out and get you a side hustle. And then, you know, six months in the future, you got your $5,000 in there. It's going to become fun. You're going to want to see that more money. You're going to start, you're going to keep doing it because you like the fact that now you have some money somewhere that now that you're prepared for emergencies and you're going to keep doing this and you're going to adjust your life because now you're in a good situation. Now you're in a situation where if something happens, you're covered. Now you're in a situation, if you get sick and can't work, you're covered. And this is going to promote self-confidence and better mental health. Because this is one of the things that happens to you when you live paycheck to paycheck. You're living in a state of perpetual panic. You're hoping the car st starts. You're hoping nothing goes wrong. You're stressed out all the time because it's all rooted with the lack of money or the fear of lack of money. So you're not mentally healthy. And worse yet, this is what you're teaching your children how to live economically. They're going to do exactly what you're doing unless they're like me. Uh, I grew up in a single parent household. My mother was demonstrably bad with money. And I made a statement to be counter to what she was. 
And as much as I tried to guard against it, I repeated some of her same financial mistakes until I got to a point of I couldn't take it anymore. And I got in a bad marriage. And once I exited that bad marriage and I got on the path of self-education and I got new knowledge and I got a new mindset, then I began to climb out of that economic hole that I was in because I am not the same person I was many years ago. Thank God, because money is important and how you handle money is important because I've said it once. I'm going to say it again, manage your money or your money is going to manage you. And most people are in a situation where their money is managing them. This is a problem. This is a big, big problem. So my friends, what I want you to do is watch this video two to three times, share it with someone who needs it and go ahead and begin building your emergency fund. Cause this is a bedrock of building your financial house because once you get to the investing stuff and you have an emergency fund, then your investments continue month after month, year after year without being disturbed. And then you get this compound interest thing going on. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So my friends, be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and more importantly, share these videos with people who need a financial education. This is your serial entrepreneur, Glendon Cameron, and I'm dropping knowledge and I'm going to help you become a healthier, wealthier, richer person. See you guys in the next yeah. video. Yeah. After I get it, I reinvest. After I get it, I reinvest. People wanna talk that talk in reality. You have not seen me in action. You think the come up comes overnight. You ain't behind the scenes. Trust me, these things don't just happen. No shade to Gerald, but G's don't come easy when you try to eat. I produce and rapping. I read that contract you sent me to sign, but excuse me, I can't help myself. I'm just laughing. Hey, you try to cut out a piece of my pie, and I ask you politely, what's it that you offer me? Yeah, I produce all my own beats, and I have no intention of losing my publisher. Yeah, independent individual boy, I've been eating off passive residuals. Yeah, let's be professional. Thanks for your time. But I had to decline at that principle hey, I've been scheming up a plan hey, I've been saving all I can hey, You can call me David Rams hey, The way I handle these bands hey, We ain't messing with the old model hey, You wear a new kid, we full throttle hey, Just know that the come up is not a flow My amigos, they focus, no one to do After I get it, I reinvest After I get it, I reinvest After I get it, I reinvest Stack it, stack it, stack it, put it back in it After I get it, I reinvest Yo, look.